good because uh, in aviation we have our flight plan, we calculate the fuel to our destination, so we have to avoid uh, this kind of thing because it may uh, uh, make a breach to uh, safety. And uh, one I insist to land in uh, Belgrade. Okay, let me cut a long story short and let me show you how these Libyan guys were wicked. You see, Libyans, I can say on authority, plotted to kill the Nigerian footballers. The reason being that, see, when it comes to aviation and flights, their time and uh, flight time, everything is well calculated. My favorite cousins, Nigeria, came to celebrate. And because of this reason, I'm telling my favorite cousins that they would have to go to the AFCON alone. Their cousins, Ghana, might not go to the AFCON with them. And so I don't know if that is how and why my brothers from France tribe in Nigeria are celebrating the defeat of Ghana. Look at this video. And so <laughs> these are my colleagues. I, we, we, we work together in um, um, Ivory Coast during the um, AFCONs. And look at them celebrating the defeat of Ghana. I know these guys are always like that. They are my friends. But it's sad that whenever Nigeria is, I celebrate with them. But look at what they are doing to me. <laughs> DJ Hello, lovely people. My name is DJ Paco Rich, A.K. Mazi, A.K. Otumbe, A.K. Siriki, Siriki, Siriki. So welcome to my show here right here on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, then you are quite late. Transmitting from the heart of Accra, the West Hills, um, from the Range Studios here in Accra. You are welcome to this episode. So today, we are going to talk about um, Ghana Black Stars and Nigeria. And um, we are going to talk about two different things. The first thing is that Libyans are very wicked people. I can tell you an authority that with what they did to Nigeria, they, pl they planned and plotted to kill Nigerian footballers. And I'll play you videos from the pilots and officials uh, after uh, after a couple of interviews that I watched online, I, those guys no get good mind. I'll come to that. And the second thing is that Nigeria may not go uh, to Afcon. Um, Nigeria may go to Afcon without Ghana. Looking at the way things are going, like you know, it's always fun when Nigeria and Ghana are in a tournament in Afcon. Like yo, that kind of it trends like yo, these two countries are vibrant. They sell the tournament, they make it attractive. They have staffs to make it more interesting because uh, whether you like it or not, these are the two most prominent and vibrant countries in Africa, Ghana and Nigeria. You can't take that away from us. Forget about the other people. And so, unfortunately, Ghana crashed with the Sudan counterparts and they were beaten by two goals to nil in Libya. They had earlier on played in Accra and they played a draw, which wasn't good to play in your home 2-2-2-0-0. Two, 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 uh, zero, zero. And the person that felicitated uh, us, uh, whatever they call it, is the former coach of Ghana Black Star. His name is James Kwesi Apia. You see, I believe that it serves Ghana right to be treated this way because Ghana is fond of not treating their heroes right. This man served Ghana very well. In his time as a coach, but they criticized him badly that he was the worst thing that happened to Ghana Black Stars. And eventually they took his job from him. But during his time, he was doing some club jobs at Sudan. So they knew his competence and his, you know, skills. So Sudan came back for him. And since then, coach James Kwesiapia has been doing miracles with the Sudan side. And so when he was scheduled to play with Ghana, it was more like a revenge or to make a statement that he can do the job better than any other person. And so he did not disappoint the people of Sudan. He's done a yeoman's job by uh, almost qualifying Sudan to the AFCON and we, 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 we give him thumbs up for that. Yes, I'm not going to bag Ghana for those things that they did. Ghana is fan of that. Not recently, how they 
took a, a, a Samoan from the team wasn't really nice. How the day are you was uh, taken from the team wasn't really nice. People that sometimes play their hearts at for Ghanaian teams, often at the end, they are not treated nice. And so I think they deserve this punishment. But this is not the first. I think it happened in, I think, 2004. Ghana failed to qualify to the AFCONs. And then eventually they made it to the World Cup and they did well. So let's hope that if they are unable to make it to Morocco, maybe the World Cup they can do. But looking at even the current form and the coaching style and everything, we don't have hope. Because we have all the quality players' names, the Kudos and the Thomas Partis and all that. But when they play together as a team, we are not getting results. And it is bad and disappointing. And so we will leave that there. And so Nigeria might have to go on this journey alone with their brothers, without their brothers, you know. And so this is how it's going to be. But also to come to um, the Libya people. Libya people, I can say, are the most wicked people on this soil we call Africa. If you would want to plot the death of your own football, like people that you played football with, that that's quite heartless. The reason is that the pilot that was flying the flight that um, carried uh, the footballers, the Nigerian footballers, had spoken. And he's made some revelation that made me feel like, nah, these guys are very dangerous. How could they do this? Because what they did was close to killing Nigerian football team. Let's listen to him. Nigeria for Libya yesterday. Okay. What was the point of uh, arrival? Uh, the flight plan was uh, to land uh, as destination uh, Benghazi, Benina. But unfortunately, and we got the approval from uh, the Libyan Civil Aviation of, uh, Authority that we are approved to land in Benghazi. But unfortunately, when we start descent, they asked us to divert to uh, Labrig, which is at uh, almost uh, 150 miles, that means 300 kilometers uh, around uh, uh, more far, but it's at the east. So it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, our even our alternate, uh, something which is not good because uh, in aviation we have our flight plan, we calculate the fuel to our destination, so we have to avoid uh, this kind of thing because it may uh, uh, make a breach to uh, safety. You understand what they did clearly is a like threat to safety of the footballers because being in a flight that let's say has been scheduled to fly for five hours and you later divert the flight and they have to go to place that will maybe take them six hours or seven hours that's a suicidal like yo you are actually digging the hole of people to die and these are not just ordinary people what's their crime I've heard people saying that uh, when uh, 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 Libyans came to Nigeria, they treated them unfairly and all that. But fact check, we have heard the side of Nigeria and f with evidence, with what they are saying, most of these things that they are claiming is false. It's false. They were just doing things their own way and they ended up in those things, those mess. But anyway, the players are back home and, and I have visuals of them. Let's listen to what they also had to say and some of their uh, football authorities. <laughs> King of Meme! King of Meme! King of Meme! Captain! 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 The place they call Al 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 Al
for us to land. It was a very terrible experience. The, the pilot has to manage himself to see how he can land with us in a situation, in an airport that was not fully ready to receive us. But uh, that's not even the story. We spent 12 hours or close to 18 hours locked in a, in, a, in a conference hall without water, neither water, no food, no internet, no network, no communication whatsoever with anybody. And the most, the highest disturbing thing was for us to communicate to our embassy people to tell us that they were not even given permission to come to Benghazi, to close of coming to our side. So we are left hopeless. We don't even know where to go. We cannot go out one way. Now sit there and tell me that Libya people are not wicked doing this to just colleagues. Let's put everything aside aside from the tournament. These are team like you are all footballers. Why would you treat another person this way? Tell me. But anyway, it is what it is. And I pray they never have any tournament to play in Nigeria because I trust Nigeria for that. That if Libya by any chance have to play football, maybe they will, they will, they will, they will come and stand in Togo or Benin and call them. But even that, we we'll go show them Pepe. When they come and even play in Ghana, we we'll go show them Pepe. But anyway, guys, this is the update that I have for you in the world of sports today. My name is DJ Paco Richie. Let me see you in the comment section. What do you think? Do you think Ghana has to maneuver their way to get to the Afghan because it is fun to have them in the, you know, tournament? And also to the Libyans, what do you have to tell them? My name is DJ Paco Richie. I'm out of here. will definitely be back with another episode. DJ Paco Rich.